Good morning, boys and girls. We are on lesson 10 and on page 55. So make sure you are turning to the correct page. Today, we're going to be learning about multiplying decimals together. So make sure you're on the correct page and we will be multiplying. So for the first problem, we have here 53 times 1 and 2 tenths, or you can call it 12 tenths. We are going to multiply first. We have 53, so I wrote down right here 50 and 3. And over here we have 12 tenths, so I wrote 10 and 2, okay? So 3 times 10 is equal to 30. And 50 times 100 is equal to 500. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And 50 times 2 is equal to 100, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these numbers together. So I'm adding 30 plus 6. So 30 plus 6, which gives me 36 tenths. And on the bottom, we have here 500 plus 100, and that's going to give me 600 tenths. Okay, and when you add those two numbers together, you're going to get 300, sorry, 636 tenths. So let's figure out if that's true, and we're going to solve on this side. So we have 3 times 2 is equal to 6. 3 times 1 is 3, bring down my 0, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. I'm going to add everything together at 6, 3, and 6. Remember that you are going to move your decimal over once because there is a decimal here. And my final answer is going to be 63 and 6 tenths. Okay, so this is the same thing. You have 636 tenths. And if you were to write that as a decimal, it would be written as 63 and 6 tenths. The 6 goes in the tenths place, and it would be the same answer, okay? Now we're going to move on to problem B. For problem B, they ask you to multiply 2 and 1 tenths, so we have 21 tenths and 82. So this is 82 right here, and now I'm going to multiply. 2 times 20, or 2 times 2 is equal to 4, add my 0. Over here, I have 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. 8 times 2 is equal to 16. Add my two zeros at the end. Right here, I have 8 times 80 times 1. Multiply 8 times 1, which is equal to 8. And add my 0, which is 80. So if I were to add 40 plus 2, I would get 42. And over here, if I were to add 1,600 or 1,600 plus 80, I would get 1,680. And when I add those two numbers together, I am going to get my final answer of 172.2 tenths. Now we're going to see if that's true when we multiply on this side. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Don't forget your decimal. They didn't put 1 here, but I'm going to write it. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Bring down my 0. 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and then add everything together. 0, 8, 16, 2 plus 0 is 2, 8 plus 4 is going to give me 12, 6 plus 1 is 7, wait, and bring down your 1. So I get 100, so I got 1722. 2. Now you're going to move your decimal over once, just like how you moved it over once for 2.1. Okay, so your final answer is 172.2. Now I'm going to move on to problem number two. Problem number two asks you to estimate, which means to round. Then use the standard algorithm to solve. Express your products. Products means the answer to a multiplication problem in standard form. So I need to make sure that I'm writing in standard form. When I estimate 4, 42 tenths, I'm going to estimate it to 4, which is the whole number. And 34, I rounded it to 30. So 4 times 30 is equal to 120. And let's see if our answer is close to that one as well. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry down my 0 because I'm multiplying in my tenths place. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. Add all of my numbers together. 8 plus 0 is equal to 8. 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 4. And bring down my 1. 
So the last thing I need to do is I need to make sure I place my decimal, move over my answer once. So my final answer is 142.8. Now on this side, I'm doing the same thing. I rounded 65 to 70 as a whole number and I rounded 5.8 or 5 and 8 tenths to 6. Okay, so now we are going to multiply 7 times 6 is equal to 42, add a 0 at the end, that gives me 420. Let's see if our answer is close to that. 8 times 5 is equal to 40, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 plus 4 is 29. Bring down my 0, now multiplying in my tens place. 6 times 8 is equal to 48, 6 times 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. I'm going to add all of my numbers together, I have 0. 9 plus 8 is 17, 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7, and bring down my 3. Now remember there is a decimal at 5.8 tenths, so I'm going to bring my decimal over. So my final answer is 377. Make sure you're turning your page to page 56. For page 56, they're asking you to multiply standard algorithms, so same thing. So we have right here, I rounded 3.3 .3 to 3, and I rounded 16 to 20. When I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6, and add my 0, that gives me 60. Now, 6 times 3 is equal to 18. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. I'm going to carry down my 0. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 again is 3. I'm going to add all of my numbers together. I get 8, 12, and 5. So I get 5. To eight. Now, I'm not done yet because I need to make sure I move my decimal. I move my decimal over once, so my answer is same thing. I'm going to move my decimal over once. Now for problem D. I have 15.6 or 15 and 6 tenths times 17. Okay, now I rounded my numbers already. I rounded 15 to the whole number of 20 and 17 to the whole number 20 and I got 400. So 6 times 7 is going to give me 42. Carry my 4, bring down my 2. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 4 is equal to 39. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is equal to 10. I'm going to carry down my 0 because I'm multiplying in my 10's place. I know that 1 times 6 is equal to 6, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is equal to 1. I'm going to add all of my numbers together. 2 plus 0 is equal to 2, 9 plus 6 is equal to 15. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. I need to make sure that I move my decimal over once. So I get 265.2 as my final answer. Now I'm going to move on to problem E. Problem E, I have 73 times 2.4. So I rounded 73 to 70 and 2.4 to the whole number 2. 7 times 2 is 14 and add a 0 at the end gives me 140. Now I'm going to multiply. So I know that 3 times 4 is equal to 12, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1 is 29. Bring down my 0, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 7 is 14, add all of my numbers together. 2 plus 0 is 2, 6 plus 9 is 15, 4 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 7, and bring down my 1. I'm going to move my decimal over once because for my problem I had to move it over, so as well as the answer, I'm moving it over once. Over here. We're multiplying 193 and 5 tenths, so I rounded 193 and 5 tenths to 200, and I also rounded 57 to 60. I'm multiplying 2 times 6 together, which gives me 12, and I'm adding the 3 zeros at the end. Now, I can multiply for my problem and see if I get the similar answer as my rounded numbers. 5 times 7 is equal to 35, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3. 21 plus 3 is 24, 7 times 9 is 63, plus 2 is 65, 7 times 1 is equal to 7, and 7 plus 6 is equal to 13. I'm going to bring down my 0. Now I am multiplying. So right here I'm multiplying 5 times 5, and I ran out of room right here, so I'm raising these numbers, but 5 times 5 is equal to 25, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17, 5 times 9 is 45, plus 1 is 46. 5 times 1 is equal to 5, plus 4 is equal to 9. And I'm going to add all of my numbers together. 5 plus 0 is equal to 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. Carry my 1, bring down my 2. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, carry my 1. 
9 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 11. So my final answer, I need to move my decimal over once, just like in the problem. So my final answer is, let's see, 11,029 and 5 tenths. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next problem. From the next problem, it says here, Mr. Jensen is building an ice rink in his backyard that will measure 8 and 4 meters by 22 meters. What is the area of the rink? Now, we haven't learned area yet, but area is equal to base times height. So what I'm multiplying here is I'm multiplying these two measurements. I'm multiplying 8.4 times 22 meters, and that's what you have here. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 2 times 8 is equal to 16. Carry down my 0. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 8 is equal to 16. Add all of my numbers together. 8 plus 0 is equal to 8. 8 plus 6 is equal to 14. Carry my 1, bring down my 4. 6 plus 1 plus 1 is going to give me 8, and bring down my 1. Remember to move your decimal over once, because just like in the problem, you're doing the same thing. So we have 184 and 8 meters. We know it's meters because in the problem, they're solving by meters long. Now for the last problem, we have Rachel. Now for Rachel, it says here that Rachel runs 3.2 miles each weekday and 1.5 miles each day of the weekend. How many miles will she have run in six weeks? Okay, so we need to figure out how much would she have ran in six weeks. So in order to do that, I am multiplying 3.2 first times 30. So that's what I'm going to write down here, 3.2 times 30. Okay, and if you want to round it, you can, but I'm going to multiply these numbers first together. So I know that 0 times 2 is equal to 0. 0 times 3 is equal to 0. Bring down my 0. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Add everything together. Do not forget to move your decimal over once. So I get 96 right here. Now, I'm not quite done yet because now I need to multiply 1.5 times 12. So I am going to multiply that right here. 1.5 times 12. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Add my 0. 1 times 5 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add my numbers together. I get 0, 8, and 1. 180. Now I need to move my decimal over once so I get 18. So right now I have 96 plus 18. And when I add 96 plus 18, I'm going to get 104 miles. Okay, so I'm going to write 104 miles. Now, I'm going to go over this question one more time. So right here, we know that each weekday, she runs 3.2 miles. So she runs 3.2 miles each weekday. And the weekday is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? So that means there are five days in a weekday, okay? Now, what is five times six? Because there are six weeks. Five times six is equal to 30. So that's where we're getting that number from. We're multiplying the number of weekday times the six weeks. When we multiply those two numbers together, you get 30. And that's why we're multiplying 3.2 times 30 because we know that she ran 3.2 miles each five each weekday. So when you do that, you get 96. Now, that's not the end of it. They ask you, how are you going to figure out how many miles she will have run in six weeks? So in order to figure that out, I am multiplying times 12. And the reason why I'm multiplying times 12 is I need to figure out how many, um, let's see, we're figuring out 1.5, how many miles will she have run in six weeks? We're figuring out how many miles she would run in six weeks. So we're multiplying times 12, and what we're going to get is 18. Okay, now with 18, we're going to add those two numbers together, and we get 114 miles. Okay, and I think that is all for today. Make sure you guys are asking me questions in class if you are confused, and I can go over it. I will see you soon.